Hey, what's up my YouTube friends? Thanks for joining me. We're jumping into Figma again today. We're gonna to be looking at uh, how to make a color system very quickly and efficiently inside Figma. Almost every project I start with, uh, I start with styles, typographic styles, color styles, layer styles, creating a whole palette of color styles, you know, 15, 20 colors that you might use throughout a project. Uh, can be a very tedious kind of process. Uh, I want to show you guys a way to kind of speed that up, make it a little more efficient, get a little bit automated through some plugins, uh, which actually I want to kind of take a step back and talk about how I got to this point. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video kind of proposing uh, or, or questioning, how can we make Figma more like InDesign? In InDesign, you can insert these little text snippets inside your document to do things like the, the file creation date, uh, last modified date, uh, automatic page numbers. You put those on a master page and your InDesign document as it grows, you know, you're putting together a big catalog or multi-page document. All those page numbers are dynamically set so that as you shift you know, pages around throughout the development of this book, those page numbers are automatically set up, they're dynamic, you can shuffle pages around and everything is just kind of magically set up there. You know, so in this video that I posted a couple weeks ago where I was saying, you know, InDesign has all this information that's, you know, accessible through like the development tab, type size, the, the hex code for your colors, drop shadow, X and Y values, all that kind of stuff, it's available inside Figma. But if you wanted to extract that and then, you know, visualize it for like a style guide or something, how can you do that automatically? So I put that video out there, uh, linked it up on Twitter, Figma Lion uh, at Figma Newsletter, Nathan Smart Text Plugin by Mirko Santangelo, hope I said that right, uh, is similar to what you're looking for. And holy shit, this is what I was looking for. This is a fantastic plugin, has a lot of functionality. It brings a lot of the information that Figma knows about your, your design files and allows you to pull that in uh, through text labels for things generating like style guides when you want to explicitly call some of those attributes of your of your design styles. Uh, it's not perfect. It has a few um, you know shortcomings that I I think these are things that uh, are in the works or you know Mirko is is planning to work on in the future. It's a free plugin, so I get it. But I do hope that he he makes some of these improvements. We'll get to the to some of those improvements. That's a great plugin. We're going to use that to help us be quicker and more efficient with generating our color styles. We're going to use another plugin called Chroma Colors. Uh, and this is going to help us, uh, again, be more efficient with generating a, a large collection of, of color styles. And what we're looking at here, this is, um, I've put together a little file. This is what we're going to go ahead and build. I'm going to show you, this is kind of the end result here. But as you can see here, we're going to set up uh, a light and dark mode. We're going to set up background colors, label colors, uh, action colors. And we're going to have like four levels of each one of those. So primary, secondary, tertiary. Uh, quaternary. And you can see here, this is a pretty simple color system. Uh, and you can see it, you know, if, if you want to create all these things manually to get all these local styles set up here, uh, it can be a little bit of a tedious process, a very manual process. Um, and then you can see we have the uh, the labels indicating this is this is the color and this is the, the hex value of that color. You know, if I come over here and, and wrap this in a frame, now I've got this exportable you know, file that has the information in there. It's no longer reliant on Figma to go in and inspect those layers to see some of these attributes. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump in here and I'm just gonna take you through the process um, on how to build this. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna just quickly delete all those. We'll speed this up, but delete, delete, delete. One more delete, we're done. So I've got this file set up. I've got it broken up into a couple steps. We're just going to kind of work through this together. Starting with step zero, we're going to download the plugins. We're going to make sure these are installed. We want Smart Text. I've got this installed already. Smart Text, great plugin. Uh, Mirko Santangelo, great stuff. The other plugin we're going to look for is called Chroma uh, Colors. And that one is here by Miguel uh, Solario. Uh, another great, wonderful plugin. Uh, this one works uh, pretty much flawlessly. Let's go ahead and give that a, a nice uh, heart there. Make sure you have those plugins installed. And uh, now we can just kind of start building this thing, right? So step zero, we are good. Step one, create a color chip, make a dope shape, put it in an auto layout frame with some attributes here. 
To make a dope shape, here's how you make a dope shape. Well, you start with a rectangle and we're gonna go 100 by 100. So it's a perfect square. And then we're going to round all of these to 50, but then we're gonna come back and take that bottom left corner and just set it to zero. Bam, you got a dope shape right there. So now we wanna put this into an auto layout. I'm gonna hit Shift A. And that's going to give us some defaults. We want to go ahead and turn off the external padding, uh, leave the, the uh, space between the 10, that's fine. We do want to make sure that it's set to vertical and we want to set it to a specific width of, and I think I got it listed there at 190. Uh, and I do want to make sure that that internal uh, shape is aligned to the left. Uh, now what I like to do is name this frame and we'll just call this color maybe color style um, and that way when we duplicate this stuff it just makes it easier to find stuff throughout your layers right we've got the dope shape created we've put an auto layout now we're going to move this sucker on to step four uh, says duplicate name and color chips create four duplicates of your uh, colored chip frame actually i guess i wanted to call this frame color chip so we wanna name the color chips themselves. So right now it just says rectangle one, not very helpful. We wanna call that, uh, sorry, the rectangle one, we're gonna call that uh, primary. All right, and if I, if I make four duplicates of this, I'm gonna rename each one of these, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, and this fourth one here, or quaternary. Now we want four sets of these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a label up here. We're gonna call this backgrounds. And we can give this, you know, some styling. Maybe it's like uh, 25, make it maybe bold. All right, cool. So now there's, there's four backgrounds, but this, we also wanna give it a, a little bit higher level. We'll call this light, light mode maybe. So we'll have, we're gonna have two themes. We're gonna have a light mode and a dark mode. So for light mode, we're gonna have backgrounds. Uh, we're gonna have uh, labels. Uh, and then we're also gonna have actually just one of these. We're gonna have um, action. So we've got primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. For our backgrounds, we're gonna do the same for labels. And then we're gonna have one action color for light. And then we're gonna do all of this for uh, dark mode as well gotta select this guy for light mode. We're gonna bring this all the way down here. We'll call this dark mode and then the same set, right? All right, so I think we are good here. Um, we probably wanna go ahead and give these the full layer name. You'll see why this is important here in a bit. Uh, so we want to add on to all of these um, background colors. Uh, I'm gonna select each of these and we've got primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, but we wanna give these a little bit more information. So I'm gonna hit Command R, I'm on a Mac, so this is Command R, I think it's Control R on a, on a Windows machine. It gives me this re rename dialog and I can rename this stuff pretty quick. So what I wanna do is just go backgrounds, light, and then I can use this current name uh, and it's gonna, it's gonna keep that current label name uh, and then add this backgrounds light. So I do that. Now I've got backgrounds light, backgrounds light, backgrounds light, plus the original name. And I'm gonna do that for these as well. I'm gonna call this uh, labels light current name. Perfect. Uh, and this one we're gonna call, uh, well, I'm just gonna do this because it's just the one action light primary. We're gonna do the same for all of these on the dark mode. We're gonna call this backgrounds, dark, and then current name. And we'll do the same here for labels and current name. And then finally, we've got our, looks like I did not bring the whole frame with those guys. All right, we'll fix that here in a second. This is, uh, let's see, action, dark, primary. And I'll fix that really quick just by making sure that it's in that auto layout frame. Also, we want to make sure this is color chip and instead of frame one, color chip. And that's uh, maybe a little bit OCD, but I just like to have my layer names and stuff all cleaned up so that when I'm kind of browsing through my left uh, layers guide, I can just kind of see what everything is. 
Mm. It's almost getting a little too late for coffee, but it's all right. So a uh, little more OCD. Go ahead and set these to maybe 50. So there's a little bit more hierarchy. So bam, look at this. The colors are not set yet, but we have the the makings for a color system. We've got our light mode. We've got backgrounds, uh, labels, and our action color for the light mode. And then for the dark mode, we got the same thing, backgrounds, labels, and action colors. So we'll zoom out a little bit and let's move this all on to step three. All right, step three is, we're gonna look at this first plugin, Smart Text, uh, to add the labels to these uh, frames. So what I can do is just select all of these color chips now, because we went in and made all of these layer names um, appropriate, what I can do is I'm gonna hit command forward slash to bring up my quick search and I can just look for that plugin called Smart Text. There it is, Smart Text, hit enter. Cool little interface here, we can insert and resolve. Right now we're not worried about resolving, we're worried about inserting. And these are all of those, uh, these are all of the different ways that the smart text plugin can kind of extract information from Figma and bring it into your text layer. And what we're worried about is the layer name and the color fill. We're gonna hit name and color, and we're just gonna go up here to, these are the little codes, the little snippets that's gonna put in automatically. We're gonna just put a, uh, a line break in there so that we have a nice, you know, two lines to, uh, to make this all work. Uh, I'm gonna hit insert, bam. All of those are set up. We've got those labels. They're all right. They're all perfect. Those those are now set to be dynamically, so that if we if we change those color values, um, we can come back here and hit the resolve tab, and then we can update all those dynamically set layers. Well, that's it for step three. Again, we're going to zoom out a little bit here, and let's copy all of this over into. We are going to move this over to step four. We want to move them. We don't want to. We don't want to duplicate them. We don't want to copy and paste them uh, because that's one of the limitations of this plugin. All these dynamic text variables need to be put on explicitly to each layer. You can't. Once you copy and paste it, it breaks that. So step four says create the styles. Dial in your colors. We'll do that quick. Uh, update your labels, and then we're going to use the Chroma Colors plugin. So what we're going to do here for our backgrounds, this is under light mode. So these are going to be lighter background colors. Um, I'm going to select this first one and we're going to start with white. If I just hit F and then tab, it's going to auto complete the rest of the F for me. And what we want to do is uh, we're going to go 100% white for our background color. Go to this next one and we're going to start with white again and we're going to go if I hit shift, if I've got all of those, um, that entire hex value uh, selected, I can hit shift in the down arrow key and I can I can darken the color. And if I hit up, I can uh, lighten the color. But we're starting at, at white and we're gonna go down, I think about, probably about there. Again, this is not really about color theory or anything. I'm just trying to show you guys how to qu quickly create this kind of in, you know complete set of colors. Um, I'm taking a long time to explain it because I'm demoing it and I'm, I'm talking through the process. Uh, hopefully you can see that if you, if you do this a couple of times, you'll be able to generate these a lot quicker. Anyway, so uh, background uh, tertiary, we're gonna go back to white and we're gonna go, uh, let's see, we're gonna go down a couple here. And then again, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so now you can see I've got my background colors from white to different shades of gray. And I'm gonna go ahead and bust through all these really quick. Uh, again, it's not. this is not about color theory. This is not about what, this, what your color system should be. This is just how you can very quickly uh, generate a, co a color system inside of Figma so that you've got all these, uh, these color attributes all set up. So I'll go ahead and do this really quick. I'm gonna do the same thing for labels. We're gonna start at black. So I'm gonna start at zero in tab. And our primary label will be all black. And then basically I'm just gonna do all of these to black right now. And then I can just go four on the up, six on the up, and then eight on the up. 
so I've lightened those up um, as it goes from primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. Uh, and then for the action color, uh, it doesn't really matter here because we're not really doing a real project, but I'm just going to select, uh, you know, some kind of crazy wild green, whatever. That is really saturated. You know, I don't know, something maybe there. Okay. So now we've got our light mode uh, set up. And first of all, I'm going to just, for now, I'm going to select that same action green and we're going to set that. And then for dark mode, our backgrounds are going to be darker. So these are going to almost be the inverse of our labels. Set these all to zero. Uh, background primary, we'll keep that at zero. Uh, and then we'll move these a little bit lighter. And the labels are going to be almost white. So start those at white, and then I'll kind of tune these down a little bit. So now we've got all of our colors kind of dialed in. Uh, we want to update our labels. So if I just select all of this, go back to that plugin, smart text, and now we no longer want to insert, we want to resolve. If I hit resolve and the scope is set to my current selections, which I have selected there, I'm going to hit resolve. And now close that out. And if we come in here and look, all of those hex values have been updated because they're linked up to, you know, the color chip that's in that, um, in that auto layout there. So pretty cool. We've got that. And now we still don't have these set up as color styles in Figma, uh, but that's where this Chroma colors plugin comes in. We need to have all of these colors selected and then Chroma color will create a, a color style for each individual color that we have and it will use the layer name of that uh, to name the color appropriately. And you'll see what I mean here. Chroma colors, boom. That plugin, there's no interface to it. It just, you just select the colors you want and it does all the magic uh, on its own. So look at this, we've got all those colors are now set up uh, inside Figma. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a really quick little, we're gonna, I guess we can move these over to step five. Uh, just a couple quick uh, cleanup things that I like to do to make sure that uh, this is, you know, set up for how I like my file set up so I can you know, continue to be efficient and move forward. So I wanna make sure, let's see, we've got all our backgrounds dark, primary, quaternary. No, we want that to go primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. So basically I just get these, these are all set in alphabetical order, um, which I want these to be more in the order of the, the kind of hierarchy that's implied by the colors, by the naming. So I'm going to move these all to be in that order. Labels, dark, labels, light. Now, if we look at, if I go ahead and create a rectangle here and I go here, I've got my actions, dark, light, backgrounds, dark, light, labels, dark, light. And that is pretty much all set up. So that's about it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to use some of these plugins uh, to be a little bit more efficient. Um, there's a lot of other ways you can use, especially that smart text plugin. There's a lot of other ways. There's a lot of other kind of attributes you can extract and, and put into your design files. So let me know in the comments what you think of this video, if it was helpful, uh, if you have other ideas uh, on how maybe to use that smart text plugin. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, that'll really help me out in getting this channel going. Again, my name is Nathan Gross and I appreciate you stopping by and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Well, let's see if we got a f video. We're going to hit stop and we're going to hit stop. Holy shit, I almost threw up there. I get so burpy, I get nervous.